Let's give a way world outreach welcome to our family member, our brother, Gavin. Come on, he's our family, Gavin Tate. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Keep playing with me just like that, just for a little bit. <clears throat> what Pastor Marco was saying was so incredibly important. Right back there are two booths. The Way Youth booths right there. They can be signed up. Let me give you a revelation. It will change your life. Parents, this is for you. The Bible says that there was a young boy that was born to a young woman. The woman could not have children. Thank you so much. Praise God for the spirit of God flowing already, right? The woman could not have children. Her name was Hannah. Do you know who I'm talking about? She had tried and tried and tried. The Bible says one day she got on her knees and she prayed a different prayer. She prayed, Lord, if you'll give me a son, I will dedicate him to your house his entire life. And that moment, the seed took place. It's not because God didn't love her or want to give her it in the first place. But something happens when you as a parent dedicate there comes a time where I understand you're trying to work with your kids, but church is a non-negotiable. It really should be. My parents, I grew up in a family, obviously a ministry family. And, you know, obviously we saw dad minister in our whole life and my mom. But I got to be honest. I mean, especially in my high school years, I had times I did not want to be in church. I did not want to go there. But I remembered since I was a young child, it did not matter if I wanted to or not. I was going to get spanked or I was going to go to church. And here's the deal. You might think that's manipulation, that's whatever. What am I doing now with my life? I didn't have an option to go to church. And let me tell you something. This is the revelation. This will change your life. Listen, parents, closely. It said that Samuel was in the house of God doing the duties of the Lord every day. So he was just showing up to the house, yet he did not know his purpose and he had not heard God's voice yet. Think about that. It was not until Samuel was in his high teenage years, even though he literally was delivered into the house of God since he was an infant, he did not hear God's voice for all of those years, but he was in the house. One day... The Bible says God says his name, but it sounded like Eli's name, Eli's voice. So he goes to Eli. You know the story. Eli says, go back to sleep. I didn't call you. He goes again because he said it second. The third time he comes, he says, wait a second. This is Jesus calling you. This is God calling you. Next time say, I am here, Lord. Speak. My point is this. You never waste any opportunity your teenagers are in the house of God because listen, you never know the moment that God is going to call their name. You don't know the moment that God is going to give them their purpose. This is a non-negotiable this weekend. Pastor just said he will help you make a way if you don't have a way. They need to be in the house of God because every time, even though you're just doing the motions... You're giving God an opportunity to put his hand on them. Pastor Marco is going to impart ministry. I'm going to be there and the power of the Holy Spirit is going to deliver your children from many things that they have. That's happening Saturday night. Friday night, Pastor Brian has already told me part of what he's preaching. And I just got to tell you, it's literally from God. The moment he said it on the phone, I said, dear Jesus, I said, I hope everyone is there to hear this because of what God is going to do. This is... This is a time, get your kids in the house. You don't know what's going to happen, but they have to be there because if they're not there, they might miss an opportunity. This is an opportunity for the hand of God to touch them. Do you hear me? You never know when God's going to say their name. They're going to hear God for themselves. Amen. Genesis 16, 7 and 13. Are you ready for the word of God? 
Thank you so much, guys. I'm good. They're going to put it on the screen. Genesis 16, 7 and 13. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to shore. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, I have truly seen the one who sees me. This is a story where there is a woman who is by herself running from the drama of her life. She got pregnant because she was in the family of Abraham. Abraham was given a promise, but the promise wasn't happening on his schedule. So as all of us do, when we don't like God's timing in the way he's doing something, we begin to feel we have to help God. So therefore, his wife comes to him. It wasn't even his idea. His wife comes to him and says, I need you to sleep with this woman. I mean, talk about a soap proper, dear God. Your wife's, te you're telling me to go sleep. You're saying to do this. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And... <laughs> So he goes and does it. She gets pregnant. And now the wife is upset at her for doing what the, she was supposed to do. Now, you got to understand, the Bible says that she ran into the desert because she was being so badly mistreated. Now, it's one thing to be mistreated in your house. And you're like, man, I need to get some space. I'm going to go into my room. I'm going to shut the door. I don't want to talk to you for a while. I'm going to go over to a friend's for a while. No, no, no. She was willing to run out into a desert and die. Because of how badly she was being treated. Some of y'all have run away from home. You know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all in homes where you did not want to be there. It was not a sanctuary. It was not a place of peace. It was a war zone. She runs into the desert and she thinks she's alone. This is the issue with the church. One of the main issues is that even though we read the Bible, even though we hear and we see worship, you still somehow think the moment you leave this building, God only stays here and he doesn't go home with you. You're still convinced that when you go through an argument or a problem, that you have to do it on your own. Why else would you be trying to do the things you're doing right now? If you felt God was with you, and if you knew God saw you exactly where you're at, knowing exactly every detail that you're going through, don't you feel you would trust him more? We as a church would believe in the words God says because the moment you know you're seen, you see, somebody just wants to know they're seen. Do you know how many people, if you would just walk up to them and say, I just want you to know God sees you. I've done this all over the world since I was a child. Some of the most powerful words you can ever tell somebody, I want you to know that God sees you I'm here, and I just wanted you to say, because I'm here, God's here, and he sees you. This woman is by herself, but she wasn't by herself. God was with her, chasing her down in the desert, and the moment she felt she was the most alone, God came the closest he had ever been. Listen to what I just said. The moment you feel you're the most alone... God has come the closest he could ever be. His eyes are on those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord are searching about the whole earth to look for hearts fully devoted to him. Can I give you a little news flash? We might be arguing in the church about the carpet color, splitting up churches, people taking people here in competition with one another where we can't even help a church and there's seven on our street, yet we can't get together and help each other because we don't want to, because we're all about numbers and about, you know, who's got this. We're, we're coveting literally people as if they're our own slaves and property. 
but God is looking for a heart fully devoted to him. Politicians might go in and out of office. Economies come up and down, but God is looking for a heart fully devoted to him. The, you, the gas might go up to $10 a gallon, but it doesn't matter for a heart that's fully devoted to him. It doesn't matter if you just lost your job. Once you recognize God is with you, and you come to the Lord and say, now you're the boss of my life. You have a heart fully devoted to him. And God does things for people whose hearts are fully devoted to him. Do you remember there was 3.2 million people in the middle of a desert? Do you know that God, for those people, because he saw those people, he provided a pillar of fire by night so they never got cold. So they never got sunburned. He made sure he put a cloud over them during the daytime. They never got sick one day in 40 years. Their clothes never wore out in 40 years. Their shoes never wore out in 40 years. They never had an issue. If they were feeling a little hot, the angel of God would come and turn down the temperature for them a little bit. Anything that they needed, if they wanted water, there didn't need to be water. There was a rock there, so they hit the rock and the water came out. If they needed food, they didn't need to cook anything. They didn't need to put a fire. They didn't need to go over to the grocery store. Why? Because God would just rain down angels' food in the midst of nowhere. If there was a man and he was a prophet and he was by the river, the Bible says, by himself. But God saw the man because he had a heart fully devoted to him. So he sent the birds to come and give him food. Have you possibly limited God because of who's in office or who's not in office? Who's the ruler of this city? Who's the governor? Who's the mayor? Are they ever going to get it right? The moment you stop looking to anyone else but God, he will go ahead and take his rightful place as your provider. Poverty is a curse. It is not a blessing. The Bible says that God told the people of Israel and Moses, he said these powerful words. He said, there shall be no one poor among my people. That's in the Bible. I'm not trying to make this up. He said, all the other nations, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, you're gonna, they can have poverty, they can do the thing. But I'm the king of my people. And a king is represented by the status of which his people are living in. And he said, it reflects not well upon me when my people don't have their needs met. So there will be no poor among my people. But understand, that only comes when people say, your priority, God, is now my priority. You see, there was a man named Noah in the middle of a time where the Bible literally says every single man and woman's thoughts was only on evil and not on good. Any impulse they had, they did it. They didn't even think about it. They did whatever sin was in their mind. But God saw one man, his family wasn't even right with God. But the Bible said because he was right with God, he let his entire family come into the boat. This is a word for you who have unsaved family members. Since you're in the boat, God has reserved spaces for all of your family. <laughs> you see, there was another man named Abraham who in the midst of a time when he had just gotten a promise and the son had been born, God comes to him in the middle of the night and whispers something in his ear. He says, I want you to give me your son. I want you to put him on an altar and kill him. He doesn't only obey God. He wakes up early the next morning to obey God. I don't know about you, but I would postpone it as long as I could. But because he feared God, delayed obedience is still disobedience. So he got up early and he went with him on. And when he was on the mountain, God saw his obedience and he waited till the moment he literally lifted the knife to kill his son. But the angel of God came and stopped him and he said, I now see you fear God. You don't have to hurt him all along, Abraham. I've had this sheep in the thicket waiting for you. I just wanted you to know it wasn't Isaac who needed to die today. It was you who needed to die today. Abraham did not go into that mountain to kill his son. He went to kill himself. He went to die to his own will, to his own desires. God begins to take care of people and he sees people whose hearts 
are fully devoted to him. The Bible says that God saw a man in the midst of a war. And when the sun started to go down, this man, Joshua, was winning the battle. But he didn't want the sun to go down because he said, we're winning, we're doing well. So God, if you would please hold the sun in its place. And for one man, God held the sun still in the sky for 24 hours. The sun did not rotate. Do you understand scientifically the problem with that? If we don't keep spinning, if the sun doesn't keep going, problems happen. But God says, I'm the one who flicked the sun into place anyway. I'm the one who put that star over there anyway. I'm the one who has the millions and millions of galaxies. I've known them all by name. Our telescopes can look out light years, y'all, light years of time. Yet we still are seeing that the atmosphere and the cosmos is still growing. They're like, it's getting bigger. The galaxies seem to keep getting bigger. Even if we could measure to the end of one part of the galaxy to the end, listen to this. Psalm says that God could measure one end to the end in the span of his hand. That's from the tip of his pinky to the tip of his thumb. All of it fits from the tip of his pinky to the tip of his thumb. And you are still worried if God is going to help you pay your rent. All of the universe fits from the tip of his pinky to the tip of his thumb. Now get this, get this, don't miss this. Isaiah then says that God has put your name and he etched it and engraved it on the palm of his hand. Get this picture now. If the universe of God is from the tip of his pinky to the point of his thumb and your name is on his hand, you are the center of God's universe. Samson was in a place where his eyes were gouged out, his hair was cut because of the sin, because he was laying on the lap of the lust of Delilah. The church in many places is laying on the lap of Delilah, getting our things stroked by our lust and desires. In the Bible, one of the scariest sentences in the entire word says that Samson didn't even know when God left. He didn't even know that God was gone. He tried to do the thing, tried to get, and God was already gone. He didn't even know the moment it was over. But because God loved his son, there was a moment at the end when Samson was in two pillars and God saw him. And in the midst of it, God was watching him the whole time. And he puts his hands on his pillars and he whispers a prayer. He doesn't say it loud. He doesn't shout it out. He whispers, God, give me one more time. That I could take out your enemies. And the Bible says because God saw him and answered his request that he killed more people in his death of the enemies of God than he ever did his entire life. There was a king named Hezekiah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He sees you tonight. He sees you tonight. One of you, you mothers need to know he sees you right now with your kids, with your children at home. When you feel like you're all alone and you're single, he's watching you. You people at your jobs, you need to know he sees you right now. His eyes are on you. You're not alone. You children, you teens who are afraid of things, have fears in your life. He sees you right now. You don't have to know that you're alone. You can be completely protected because he's watching you. His eyes are searching his eyes are looking around his eyes are saying who 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 his heart is fully devoted who can I bless who can I show off for a king was there and the prophet came to him and said you're going to die of the disease that you have so the king when the prophet was literally look at this picture he's walking out of the room and Hezekiah the king turns to the wall and he says a prayer that nobody else heard, including the prophet, but God heard the prayer. He says, God, you promised me that if I would do what you told me, this can't be my end. And he taps the prophet on the shoulder who's already out the door. Say, hey, hey, hey hold on, hold on. He just said a prayer. You didn't see it, but I saw it. He just cried out to me. You didn't see it, but I saw it. He just gave us, he just lifted his voice. You didn't hear it, but I heard it. I want you to go back and tell him he's going to get 15 more years because I see him. Go ahead and play that track. Psalm 14, two through three. The Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. 
He looks to see if anyone is truly wise. Listen to this. If anyone is seeking God. (laughs) But no, all have turned away. All are corrupt. No one does good. Not even a single one. Listen to this. God sees you, but he's looking for people who see him. His eyes are on you, but are you looking for him? Can you imagine every morning how the king of kings, God himself in heaven, is looking over the pinnacle of heaven down through the windows, and he's watching as you rise up in the morning. He's looking for people who will say his name before you say the name of another. He's looking for people before you go to sleep at night that will call out his name and say thank you Jesus for a day that I had today and even though I don't understand everything that's going on in my life I just thank you for loving me and who are beginning to worship him as they fall asleep and can take over their dreams and give them love letters in the night and so their sleep is not filled with nightmares and destruction and anxiety and fear which you're going to get delivered of tonight but it's full with letters that God writes you in the night time prophetic dreams, dreams about your future, answers about your life. God loves to be sought. He seeks to be sought. He desires to be desired. You know, there are some times when God makes himself so real to you, it's a little bit scary with how much he's watching you. A month and a half ago, I was in my house My little boy, Maximilian, he's almost three years old. He's turning three this month. My wife had gone to work. I woke up and he was really excited because I told him I was gonna make him pancakes. He was so excited, so like, yeah, pancakes. And we got up and I went into the kitchen. I'm starting to get the stuff out. Turn it down just a little bit in the monitor. I'm starting to get all the stuff out and I got, you know, the bacon stuff here. I got this here. And and I look in the refrigerator and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh no, I forgot the eggs. I'm like, oh no, because he's already like, he's going pancakes, pancakes. He's just so happy. He's just so excited. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to tell him we got to go into the car right now and go to the store and he's going to cry because he literally, the first thing he said that morning, pancakes, dad, dad. And I'm like, yeah, I let him down. Listen closely. The moment I close the door, to the refrigerator I hear a, it's about 9 15 in the morning I go to my front door I open it one of our neighbors down the street is standing in front of me and she's holding two dozen eggs and she says I don't know if you need any eggs I got a lot of eggs this morning I start to cry She's like, are you okay? I was just giving you some eggs. I hit my knees. When I closed the door, I hit my knees and I said, Jesus, for my little boy today, you just wanted to remind us you see him. I'll never forget about the time when I was, (laughs) see, when I was born, I came out not breathing. I had water inside of my lungs and in my brain. I was mentally retarded. I was blind. I was in an incubator for eight weeks. The machines were breathing for me. I had no power to breathe. But God saw me when I came out of the womb, even though all the doctors said I was going to die. And my dad knew that God saw me. So he looked at me and he said, and he saw a scripture, which is now my life scripture, James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift comes from above. And he said, this son is a perfect gift. He says, do all you can do and I won't sue you. (laughs) So they took me in an incubator. But because God saw me, you know, there was 22 other babies in that NICU and every single one of them died. But my father had people, thousands of them all around the world as he had tapes playing next to my bed and of him preaching, praying for me. And God saw a little boy there. And over the next 12 years, I wasn't only healed. I had no vocal cord box for the first two years of my life. I had to sleep inside of a glass crib so I could make no noise. My mom would have to see me as I was crying because when I cried, I'd make no noise. But I grew a vocal cord box in the first two years. Heaven knows I haven't been quiet since. Then the next years throughout my life, I 
building to solidify and my, you know my brain and my head was this big so I couldn't wear any t-shirts when I was young so all of my pictures are in like the the sailor outfit and the train outfit and it's pretty funny now but I grew into my head basically and but the reason I knew God saw me was so amazing because when my son Max was born he came out not breathing my wife had to have an emergency c-section and they got him out and he wasn't breathing. They were shoving the tubes down and everything. The moment he came out not breathing, I saw in the spirit myself when I was in his place. And peace filled me so strong in that moment. Why? Because if God saw me, I know he's looking at my son. So I put my finger out to him. He grabbed my finger. And they were like, he's going to be in here probably three or four weeks. We're just going to try to keep him alive. I said, y'all, he's going to be okay. Take him back there. We'll come and see him tonight. Less than 48 hours later, my son was home. Perfect. Perfect. You see, I'll never forget when I was in Australia for many, many years. And I was at a great church over there. And they asked me, the pastors, because a lot of miracles were happening on the streets and in the church and in the college. And they asked if I would lead a team to go through all their street teams for the two weeks. And I was like, you want me to lead it? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, well, I don't know if you want me to lead it. It might not be very organized. Like, I'm going to do whatever God tells me to do it. They're like, that's why you need to lead it. And I was like, okay. Because the church was not known for this. So anyway, we're driving. And our first place that we go to, we go to a house of a man. He's got glasses on. His back is hunched over. He has a cane. And we went and did landscaping work at his house. So we're moving rocks and stuff. When we get done, we're about to leave. And God says, no, turn around, talk to him. He has an issue with his eyesight. Not only that, he has a serious issue with a nerve in his body. And his back has some serious, he needs to be healed. You need to talk to him. So I go and talk to him. I said this words. Hey, sir, I just want you to know God sees you today. And he wants to heal you. Listen to the words I just said. I just want you to know that God sees you today. He loves you. And he wants to heal you. We laid hands on him. The hump that was in his back went down under my hand. He straightened up. He took his glasses off. He began to cry and began to yell, literally yell out loud crying. And I said, Jesus has just healed you, hasn't he? He said, yeah. And we cried together. After I hugged him, we got into the, the car and we began to drive down the road literally from his house. And I was just worshiping God and just saying, Lord, you saw that man out here. It was a very, a neighborhood with very few houses, but he had been watching that man walk around his house and he'd watched him get up every single morning and have issues with his back and he had watched who knows how it happened and the accident had happened he had watched how it had sucked the life and joy out of this man for so long but god you used me you sent me as a love letter from you to him to say he saw him and he just got healed and i was in the car we're in a 15 passenger van and it begins to rain so strong that literally it's like torrential rains I mean I could hardly see out the window I'm in the very very back of the 15 passenger van there's a bunch of students a couple pastors and I'm looking out and I see a bunch of pigs a huge field of pigs and I'm looking I'm like, oh okay pigs that's why the smell so bad right here my god because it was so terrible but I look out there and I'm like wait what is that and it's a little and I'm like is that a person and it was a woman who was standing out there in the midst of the pigs in this big field I go, what the heck is that? The moment I try to turn forward, God says, stop the car. Go tell her I see her and I love her. I said, what? I'm talking to God now internally. I said, what are you talking about? Stop the car. Go tell her I see her and I love her. He said, stop the car. Tell her I'm going to see her and I love her. So I just yell, stop. It freaks the driver out so bad. He slams the brake. He skids. We almost get in a wreck. I scare him. And all the other students are like, Gavin, what is going on? And I'm like, I didn't even answer. I just went past them all, opened the door, and I start running down the street. I literally, it's like slow motion now. Dun, 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 I mean, it's happening. It's like slow motion. I'm running. The rain is, I can hardly even see. I mean, it's so going. But I'm running, and I'm thinking in the moment, I'm running down in the middle of Australia, in the middle of the country, to a pig farm. Is this where my life is right now? And I run there and I look out and I'll never forget this. The woman standing out there and I yell as loud as I can. Ma'am, do you know that God sees you and he loves you? And the woman goes, what did you say? She starts walking toward me. I said, ma'am. 
God loves you and he sees you. She starts to walk and she begins to heave. She starts to cry so hard. She begins to heave as she's crying, just walking toward me, just heaving. Her body literally is convulsing. She's crying so hard. She says, my entire family left me. My husband's been gone. My daughters took all my grandkids. I'm alone out here. And I come out here because I feel like one of these pigs. And I reach out to give her a hug. And I didn't know when it was electric fence. It was right in between us. God has a sense of humor. Beautiful moment. It, it could have been so perfect. but So I reach for it. And I get hit by this electric fence. Bam! And I mean, I'm like, I'm like thrown back. But I land. And I'm like, I'm okay. It's all right. So like, I reach for it. I'm like, let me just shake your hand, ma'am. Let me just. So I reach and I get her hand. She's crying. She has a huge hump in her back. I said, ma'am, Jesus sees you today and he loves you. And it's raining so hard. I'm just like wiping, ma'am, Jesus. And she's just sitting there and she's weeping. And I said, let me lead you to the Lord today. But first, before I do that, let me pray for you. I put my hand on her back and under my hand, the swelling. Shh. In the middle of a pig farm, out in the middle of nowhere, because Jesus had been watching her. Healed her. She got saved that day. I have literally hundreds of these, but I'll only tell two more, and then we're going to pray for you. I'll never forget when I went in Texas. How many know Texas is like its own United States? There's like 23 churches I go to in Texas. It's crazy. And none of them are close to each other. <laughs> it's just, it's nuts. It's like, how is this possible? But I'm driving out to a country church. And when I say country, I mean country. It's, it's, it's so country. When they gave me the directions to find the building, they're like, okay, so you're going to leave the city. When you get out the city, you're going to start getting, ain't going to be no lights out there. So, so basically, you're going to look for the third red pole. After that third red pole, you take a left. There's going to be two fences. One of the fences is going to have a white strap. That's the fence you go ahead right through. I mean, that's the kind of country we're talking about. And I'm like, you know, every time I go out to a church like that, I'm wondering if they're taking me out there to kill me. So I'm going through and I get lost. I get lost. My GPS, there's no signal out there. There's no people out there as far as I'm concerned. There's no life out there. And I'm lost in the fields. There's only cows out there to keep me company. And I'm like, dear God. And it's about 8 o'clock. The service started at 7. So anyway, I finally get signal. And I see that the pastor's been calling me. And I'm like, oh, gosh. So I call him back. And the first thing I say, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry I'm late. If you could just, uh, you know, help me. I got lost. And he's like, what are you talking about? You're still coming, right? I'm like, huh? What do you mean? Like, the people have probably all left. He's like, no, no, no. They're all waiting. They're all waiting, Gavin. We're all here. They're waiting for Jesus to come. I said, okay. I said, well, you're going to have to help me get there. <laughs> Stay on the phone with me. So I go there, and in the middle, I'm talking of a country field. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars. And the church is this tiny church with hundreds of cars in the field. We had been having three months of revival in that area in Texas, and there were so many miracles that were happening during that time that people were literally, for three months, I was single during that time, so I didn't have to go back home. So I could stay in places for two to three months. And literally, people were getting miracles, scoliosis. There was a woman whose spine that literally had put every single piece of her backbone back in place with my hands. There was three legs that grew out on the first night. There was cancers that were, and they were going to the doctors and they were getting the x-rays and bringing them and putting them all over the walls so that when people walked in, the faith would just ignite. You're going to get healed tonight. This is a night of healing because God sees you. And so I'm out there. I get there, I open the door and these people are so packed that they're in the foyer. They're literally going like this to try to let me come through. And the moment I enter the church, they all start screaming. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, God, you better help me right? What can I do without you, Jesus, right? They're here to see you, Lord, not me. So I walk up to the front and the first woman that comes up, she's pregnant. I mean, she's about to pop. And that's what I say. I look at her and go, ma'am, you're about to pop. And everybody laughs, but then she starts crying right away. And I'm like, did I say something wrong? But, but no, she's like, I'm here on behalf of my baby. I said, where's your baby? She said, no, no, my baby. I said, what's wrong? She said, his brain is bleeding right now inside of my womb. I just came from the doctor and the doctor told me I need to get rid of the baby because it's going to endanger my life. And you better believe I started to call on the name of Jesus. 
We don't have answers, but Jesus has the answer if we allow him to give him the answer through us. So I reach out my hand, and all I can say is that I felt like a scalpel, a surgeon's scalpel went through my hand and went into her womb. And the moment it happened, she screamed. And she began jumping up and down. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. And I go, ma'am, how do you know? I mean, we don't know. Two years later, forget about the whole situation. I'm sitting on the front row of another church, and I get this little tug on my pants on the front row. I look down, and it's this beautiful little boy. And I'm like, hey, man. And he's just smiling at me. He goes, you're Mr. Gavin. And I'm like, yeah, Mr. Gavin, hi. And, and this woman comes. She said, do you remember me? I said, what are you talking about? She said, this, da, da, da. she tells me the story. I begin to cry automatically because I know what's happening. She says, this is the boy that was in my womb, and he wanted to come and meet you today. <laughs> in the midst of where nobody thought they were seen in a country church in the middle of cow fields, God's eyes were on her. Last week, I was in Texas taking my rental car out, and I went through the rental car booth. Like I said, I could sell hundreds of these because the life in God, when you give your life to him and you give over control, is exciting. It's exciting. You never know what's going to happen anywhere you go. So I'm driving out, doing it, and the woman's in the booth, and I see she's limping, and she comes, and she gets a little barcode off my car. I say, ma'am, I said, um, what's, what's going on? She said, well, a car ran over my foot and crushed it. I said, here? She said, yeah, it was about eight weeks ago. I'm almost healed now. I'm like, well, awesome, ma'am. And, and she sits down, and all of a sudden she looks at me, and she goes, you know what? Can I just say something to you? I knew Jesus hit the spot. I felt the anointing come on the moment. I said, absolutely, ma'am. She says, all my family has died. She said, I've lost 15 people to COVID already. She said, my aunts have died. She says, my brothers and sisters have died. She says, I don't know if I can handle anybody else dying. She begins to cry. I look at her and guess what I said? The same thing I've said since I was a little boy. Ma'am, God sees you today and I want you to know he loves you and that he's with you. She begins crying and bawling. I said, ma'am, I'm a preacher. I'm actually here to preach. She looks at me and she goes, you are, you are kidding me right now. I said, absolutely. You see, this is the point. When you realize that God sees you and that he's in you, you become the evidence that God is on the scene because you are there and you see them God sees them because you are in the restaurant Jesus is in the restaurant and he sees them Psalm 139 oh Lord you have examined my heart you know everything about me you know when I sit down you know when I stand up you know my thoughts even when I'm afar off you see me when I travel, when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. I can go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, you're there. If I dwell by the farthest oceans, if your hand will guide me and your strength will support me, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in the darkness, it cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all my delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in other seclusion. And as my life was recorded in your book, every day was already there. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They they outnumber the grains of sand on all of the earth and when I wake up you are still with me do you understand this God sees you tonight this God not only sees you but he's a healer and it's time to be healed this is what I want you to do lift your hands in your seat right now because the Holy Spirit is now taking over begin praying in the spirit right now if you don't I want you to begin opening your mouth in English and saying love phrases to God I love you Lord I thank you Lord 
your awesome God. Here comes the Spirit of God. Many of you have a leg that's shorter than the other leg. Many of you have a leg that's shorter than the other leg. I just want you to get up right here and begin to walk over to this area right here. Look at my hand. Walk over here to the right, please. If you have a leg that's shorter than the other leg, you want that healed tonight, go ahead and walk over here. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Make your way. Make your way. There's like a bunch of you. Thank you, ma'am. Right over here. Come up here, ma'am. Come up here. Could I have two chairs, please? Two chairs. side though like uh, like this turn this way just two of you ma'am you can come here please thank you would you sit right here ma'am go ahead ma'am you can sit here too just wait right here just uh just, come, just wait right here my brother okay so i'm gonna pray for them their legs are gonna grow out right now and it's just so that you can see that jesus is here he's always been here he wants to see you he wants to know you He's precious to you. Where's my cameraman? Let's come on a little closer, brother. You have a slip disc. There's a slip disc that's in your back. Now, I'm going to warn you about what's about to happen. When the Holy Spirit takes over the atmosphere, which he's beginning to do right now, you cannot hesitate when something begins to happen. You have to believe him because God meets with your faith. When faith touches faith, miracles are born all over this place. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Every single prayer team at every church, I wish they knew this, but God doesn't just heal one way. He heals five different ways in the Bible. Jesus gave five different ways that he healed. Number one, he heals immediately. Everybody knows those. Number two, he heals in percentages. That means that you will begin, many of you, because we're going to stand you all up and I'm going to lay hands on every single one of you tonight quickly who need healing. And many of you, the moment you are touched, you're going to feel something begin to shift in your body. God will heal you. It'll be about 20% better, 40% better, 80% better. Here's the scripture for it. The man was blind. The Bible said he laid his hands on the man and he said, can you see? This is Jesus saying that. And the man said, it's blurry. He's like, I, I can see, but it's kind of like trees. And Jesus laid hands on him again. It's not a verse you ever hear preached, but Jesus laid hands on him again. If Jesus had to lay his hands on someone again, don't you think we might have to lay hands on people again? You don't give up the first time you pray. And then he saw perfectly. That's the second way. The third way is when you do something God's told you to do. So a man was there. He spit in the mud. He put it on his eyes. He said, now go wash in that pool. If the man would have walked home, he would have stayed blind. But because he obeyed an instruction God gave him, when he washed in the pool, he was healed. It was a faith walk with mud and spit on his eyes to go over there. You see, many of you, you have unforgiveness in your heart. And until you forgive, your healing is locked. Sometimes you got to do what God tells you to do. Make that choice tonight. Make that choice tonight. The fourth way that he heals is as you go. This is one of my favorite ones where literally the lepers came to Jesus and it said he touched them all. And as he touched the lepers, it says they were not healed when he touched them. But he said, go present yourself to the priest. They still have the bad things with their skin. They still have the issues. But as they walked somewhere between where they were walking and the priest, all of the scales came off. The fingers began to pop back into joint. The leg began to happen, the skin condition. And before they got to the priest, they were completely whole. You see, sometimes it happens. You're going to get touched tonight, but you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and the back's going to be completely healed. Some of you are going to get touched tonight. And this next week, you're going to be driving your car, still believing, still holding on to your faith, knowing that the moment you touched and agreed it happened and you'll just be driving in your car and your back will just pop in place you'll be like oh my goodness right now oh my god there was a man who was in a meeting i was just in in texas and we prayed for him he had a, a oxygen tank he was sitting there next to the seat and he had an oxygen tank he put the oxygen tank on and we prayed for him nothing happened well, we're at dinner later that night, and that night I get a call on the phone, and the pastor's calling me, and he says, "You got you 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 got to come here right now." I'm like, "Where where are we where am I going?" Where would, he said he he said he just put him on the phone. He said, "Listen to this," and it was the man. He had went home, and he believed that 
the moment he got touched, he was healed. So he sat on his couch. He said, I'm done with this. I believe the moment I got touched, I was healed. He takes the oxygen tank off and he goes and walks a mile and he was completely healed on the spot. It was as he went. And the last way that Jesus heals is through demonic deliverance. Many times your healing is actually bound up in a spirit. There was a boy that was foaming at the mouth and having epileptic seizures. So you could say, spirit of epilepsy, come off, but it wouldn't have worked. That's why all the disciples tried and it didn't work. But Jesus saw this was linked to a demonic spirit. So he told the deaf and dumb spirit to come out and he also got healed of epilepsy. Read your Bible. You'll understand there are many ways that Jesus works. It's our job to find out what they are. Okay, let's pray. Sometimes it's hard. I can't even look because sometimes it happens before I even get there. And it's no fun because we couldn't get it on camera. Um, but yeah, come here, my brother. Okay, let's see, ma'am. So right here. Hey, you already have the spirit of God on it, don't you? It's so beautiful. God loves you. He sees you tonight, ma'am. Okay, so go ahead and put your legs up together like this. Put them together, both your feet. And just put them straight out. It, it might. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen too quick. Okay, so put your legs just like this together. Okay, so the left one, left one shorter, right? This one right here. Okay, so I want you to make sure your back is totally against the chair, everything. So come here, my brother. Right here, level with the legs right here. And make sure you put it on the screen, if we can get that. You got issues with your right, but your left one's shorter. So it's maybe a hip thing or something like that. Who knows? Who knows? That's okay. So, okay, put your legs up right here. Make sure we can see this if we can, if you can get it up. That's great. Okay. In the name of Jesus, go. Here it comes. Here it goes. Ma'am, it's completely even right there. I hope they got it on tape. It happened really quickly, but literally it's even. How long have you had this issue for, ma'am? Since I was born. Since you were born. Since you were born. Uh, wow, ma'am, I, if I hope you don't mind, how old are you now? 32. 32 years old. Ma'am, it literally, the moment I looked at it before I even said, let's go, let's go. Would you stand up and just show people as you walk what it feels like now? Woo, put your hands up in the air, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Take a little walk, ma'am. Take a little walk. So what was happening, ma'am, is uh, your hips were having an issue and it was throwing it off, but uh, you're even now. Wow. Yeah, you're laughing. I know. It's kind of it's kind of hilarious how crazy it is. That spectacular happens. Let's do one more, and then I'm going to pray for everybody else. But this is what I want you to do. Since we don't have all night, but we want to take time for you, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to pray for her real quick. If you have a sickness of any kind in your body, this is the way that we're going to do it tonight so that we can make sure we get to everybody. Man, this is going to be powerful. I want you to make sure you stand up, and I want you right now on this row right here from this side, go ahead and just line up right at the back right here. And just one single file line. I'm just going to walk down and pray for you. I will do this quickly. But you're going to just, by the time I get to you, remember, you need to have faith right now. I've done this all over the world. And God is going to do incredible miracles. Wow. There's somebody right here. You have a serious issue with your left foot. Just come right here, please. If you have a serious issue with your left foot, make sure you're further enough, far enough away from the stage and make sure they go all the way up this aisle right here too. Everybody who's sick, go all the way up that aisle as well, please. All the way up. Ushers, please help me. It can only be a single file line, okay? Just right over here as well, all the way to this side. Right over this side as well. You can rock right around here. Ushers, please help direct them right over here as well. Good, good, good. Great, great, great. And pray for you, man. So anyway, she's trying to tell me the story. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Stand up, ma'am. Stand up. Let me bless you, ma'am. Oh, yeah. So she's trying to tell me the story. She's like, I had hip surgery here and here, and this leg shorter than this leg. The moment she touched it, it went and just shot right out. She goes, oh. Let's give God praise right there. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. Amazing. Okay, okay. So everybody's here. So this is all that is is just to inspire your faith. Jesus is here. 
He does creative miracles. He does everything. We're going to have so many incredible miracles. Make sure it's only one single file line, and it goes all the way around here. We can do this quickly. Okay. So by the time I come, if there are two or three people behind, we're not going to be able to get to them. So make sure it's just single file. Okay. Great. Uh, cameraman, you going to come with me? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Turn that piano up just real quick. We will pray quickly for this. What I need you, if you are not in this prayer line right now for this miracle, what I need you to be doing is praying for these people who are. This will not take forever. This is the power of God that is moving on people. Uh, just real quick, backs. There, if you have a back issue at all, let's just take care of you real quick so we can le like get this line a little bit less. Back issues, would you raise your hand? Serious back issues? Okay, this is what I want you to do. Now, if you connect with this, it's going to happen right where you're standing. I don't even need to touch you, okay? So what I want you to do is look at me in the face if you have the back. Nothing special about me. It's all about Jesus, but this is what's about to happen. With your hands lifted high, I'm going to say in the Bible, only people with the back issues, the hands are lifted high. Only people with the back. The Bible says that they sent his word and he healed them. The priest would come and literally give out the word and speak it into the atmosphere. And in the words was heaven's atmosphere. So I'm going to send you the word and you have a part to play. This is your part. The moment that I speak this to you, you need to now activate it by doing something. You need to begin to move like this. You need to begin to turn like this. You need to begin to go like this. And you need to do it boldly. Do you hear what I say when I say boldly? Jesus, listen to this. He built your back. He's the creator of it. He's got billions and billions of backs just sitting up in heaven for anybody who wants them. Brand new backs. And he wants to give it to you right now. So everybody over here, would you look at me just this section right here? If you are, have your hands for your back, I want you to put your hands out toward me. Here we go. Are you ready? The moment it comes, here we come. You can already feel it, some of you right here. But as it comes, I want you to know. I want you to begin to move right now. Once the pain leaves, I want you to begin lifting your hand and doing this, okay? Because many of you are about to get this. I send you the word right there. I send you the word right there in Jesus' name. Begin testing right there. I send you the word right here, right there in Jesus' name. Now take that right there. I send you the word right here in the middle. I send you the word in Jesus' name. Faith, begin to move. Begin to activate your faith. I send you the word right here, right here. You right there. You just got healed right there, sir. You're just getting healed. Look at him. Look at him. That's faith right there, brother. How's that starting to feel? It's all gone, isn't it, man? Look at that. That's amazing. Okay, I send you the word right here. I send you the word right here as well. Just all the way in the back. I see you in the back over there. God sees you. I send you the word right here on this side. I send you the word. Begin to move. Begin to move. You have a part to play. I send you the word. I send you the word. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed by the power of Jesus' name. Now back over here. Who here your pain is completely gone? Wave your hands out. Look at all these people. Look at all these people waving their hands. The pain's completely gone. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these people right here. Wow. Wow. What is that? That's just Jesus meeting you where you're at. Okay, keep on moving. Keep on testing. Some of y'all, it's going to happen in percentages. Keep doing that. Okay, now, I hope, is this the single file line? <laughs> okay, it's wrapped all the way around. So this is what we're going to do. I want the worship team to please come up here just real quick. The worship team, come back and just give me Jesus, okay? I want you guys to sing that song, Just Give Me Jesus, one more time. This is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go through this line really quickly. They're going to sing it a couple times. We don't want to keep you all night, but I don't know if you are like have the time for a miracle, but if you do, you should stay for a second, okay, because this is all physical healing that's going to go on. This is what I need you to help me with. Before I pass by, make sure you put that part of your body that needs healing, a hand on it. So if it's your knee, put it here. If it's an organ, put it here. If it's a head, if it's your back, put it here. So already have it there, okay? Now, I want you to know this as well. We might, when I pray and I lay hands on you, just trust the Lord about what happens. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Just focus on Jesus, okay? Don't worry about the author or the method that's going to happen. Somebody, okay, somebody right here, you have a son who is in prison. You have a son who is in prison, and you have been praying because a case is coming up very soon on his behalf, a court case, and you really need some serious favor. Where are you, ma'am? The case is in your favor. God just told me to tell you, the case is already in your favor. The case is in your favor. Wow, wow. Okay, here we go. So put that hand on your body. 
Some of you are already beginning to test stuff. Uh, Dave and Kev, if you'll just help with the ushers, just get behind them, okay? We just, we're going to have to go fast. Step a little bit. One step back, everybody. One step back, everybody. And then we're going to go down. They're going to be singing. I want everybody out there to be worshiping Jesus as well. I will come up right at the very end. This will not take a long time, but I'll come up right at the very end and close it. And so, God bless you. Just a second. Be praying for people. Worship and look at Jesus right now. This is attached to a demon spirit. Just be delivered right now. Power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her. Come out of her. Thank you, Jesus. Keep following, guys. In Jesus' name right here, be healed. I want you to begin to open and close your mouth. Ah, ah, ah. That's just like that. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where are you at, sir? Keep on doing it. Jesus' precious name. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Just a second, guys. Hey, uh, if you have the spirit of anxiety, depression, or you've been dealing with suicidal thoughts right now, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, depression, there's a wave that just came in right here. I want you to lift your hands up. This is what you're going to do. You are going to self-deliver. Self-deliver. This is how you do it, okay? Repeat my words and just wait for the Holy Spirit to move, okay? So here we go. I want you to repeat these words. Say, I am free. Now, only the people, not everybody, only the people that have this spirit. Anxiety, depression, like you don't want to get up in the morning, suicidal thoughts, or you, hey, also, if you have dabbled in the occult, you need right now to receive this deliverance right now. God loves you too much to let you stay bound. So put your hands up. Don't wait. I don't want you to speak anything other than what I say. Only speak what I say. Say to yourself, I am free. Because of the blood of Jesus in me right now, I am free. Go from me now. Say it again. Go from me now. Now lift your hands and receive. Receive, receive, receive. Be free. Be free. Be free. Let it out. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There it is. There it is. It's coming out of her. It's coming right there. Come on. Let it go. Receive your deliverance. That spirit does not have a right to be in your house anymore. That spirit does not have a right to be with you anymore. The spirit of suicide, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I tell you depression to leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. You're being delivered, ma'am. You're being delivered, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Let's keep going. Be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 name. Ma'am, begin to move that neck. Begin to move that neck. Yep, yep, yep. Be healed. Be healed. Be delivered in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. Be delivered. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Man, breathe in and out right there. Go, go. That's it. Breathe in and out right there. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Let it out, sir. You got so much ministry in you. Let the fire of God touch you right there. That's power right there in Jesus' precious name. Jesus' precious name. Jesus' name. Open. Open. Open in Jesus' name. Be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit from your head to your toes. Thank you, Lord. God has given you a ministry uh, specifically with writing. Your pen is going to do much. You're going to have words to speak to many women and many men. You're going to be given a bigger place of influence in the next four months. Uh, God's going to do that for you. Just wait for it. Make sure you stay in his word. Be ready for what he wants to do. Jesus, precious holy name. Thank you, God. Thank you. Okay, now I need you to start using that. Come on, man. Stomp that thing right there. God's already here. Show me what's happening. How do you feel? It's all gone, isn't it, man? Give me a hand right there. God is good, man. Lift your hands and praise Jesus. He's the one. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. From the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be set free. Be set free from all anxiety and depression that's trying to weigh you down. Be set free. Be set free. He loves you. He sees you. He sees you. Sir, he's backing you up. 
He's with you. Be seized. Come on, move that neck. Move that neck. Move that neck. There you go. There you go. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Bless you, man. Bless you in Jesus' name. Who else? Who else? Who else is right here? Right here, right here. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. You, Jesus' name. God, just be healed. Lord, we thank you. This miracle needs to happen now. I rebuke that restraining. It's a restraining spirit. I take it off of you now. There it goes. There it goes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious holy name. Honor back, Lord. Okay, begin to move slightly, ma'am. Just nice and easy. There you go. Power of the Holy Spirit. Just move it away. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good. Start to feel better. Go by percentage. Keep moving till it's gone, man, completely. Thank you, Lord. 50% healing right there. Let it go. Thank you, Jesus' name. Jesus' name. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Jesus, he's worthy. He's the one thing. He's the one thing. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. name. Yes. Come. Okay. Go ahead and move. So you're a woman of faith. You have the gift of healing in your right hand. Okay. Lower, please. So you are a woman of faith. What's your name, ma'am? Fernanda? Okay, so you have the gift of healing in your right hand, Fernanda, and it's for young children as well. Um, that you're going to really, I, I'm telling you, God's going to take a lot of children, physical healing, but you also have a, a real ability to teach people who cannot be teached by anybody else. There's a real spirit on you of clarity. God given you that before you were in your mother's womb. It's one of your beautiful gifts. Just know God's going to work everything out that you need financially and every other kind of way. You're going to be well, well taken care of. Uh, don't worry about anything that you need in your life. Now, will you receive the joy of the Holy Ghost? In Jesus' precious name, there it is. Just receive it from your head to your toes. Thank you, Lord, by the power of Jesus. Bless you. Bless you. Hey, I see a lot of contrary thoughts that are coming uh, about you. A lot of confusion that's been trying to come from a different, a couple different areas. Uh, there's a specific couple family members. Uh, there's a lot of hecticness, a lot of warfare. I see a big warfare that's going on around you right now. There it is right there. Just let him touch you. Don't wait. Don't wait. There it is. In Jesus' precious holy name. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy. Just let him touch you. Jesus name right there by the power of the spirit of God thank you Lord thank you be set free in Jesus name you need more you need heart healing you need heart healing in Jesus name now begin to move your leg as well ma'am but the God's beginning to touch you in your heart there you go there you go how's it starting to feel ma'am go it's good isn't it how long you had that for for like three years you've had that for three years and you have no pain right now isn't God incredible go ahead Wow, wow, God is amazing. Lift your hands, man, because you need heart healing right now. Put your hand on your heart in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you. Commit surgery right there. Now just receive. Just receive. Thank you, Lord. Just receive. Just receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' name. It's worth it. It's worth it. You are my one thing. Because you are my one. She cut it about down. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed right there. Thank you, Lord. Touch, touch, touch. Thank you, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' name. God hears your prayers. He's going to move on what you need. You have not been left alone. He sees you. His eyes are on you. Do you see it? I'm looking at you. He's looking at you. You need This word was for you tonight, ma'am. What's your name? Andrea, this word was for you tonight. God bless you, ma'am. Now lift your hands. Let me give you the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, from your head to your toes. There it is. That's the joy of God. That's it. Just drink it. Drink it. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. That's the joy of God. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus, I pray for healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed right here in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Begin to move it, ma'am. Begin to move it. Be healed in Jesus' name, sir. I need you to start moving, man. You got to partner with God. Partner with God. All good? How long you had it for? I just got it at work. You just got it at work? Well, it's in quick, out quick. Praise God. Four tears in your esophagus. You got four tears in his esophagus. In Jesus' name. Breathe in and out. Go again. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. He's recreating it right now. Recreate. 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 Recreate that esophagus. Four tears. Be molded. Be stripped up. Jesus' name. Jesus. You see, that's the power of God on you, brother. That's hot. That's the power of the Lord on you. In Jesus' name, from your head to your toes. Receive that right there. Receive that right there. Receive that. Go power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name be completely healed be completely healed I tell you eyes to open be clear be clear be clear be clear in Jesus name right now be clear in Jesus name right now 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be clear in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As it begins to open, Lord, I thank you. Give her clarity. Give her clarity. Begin to look at me, man. Begin to look at me in Jesus' name. Healed eyes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Begin to clear them up in Jesus' precious name. Begin to clear it up. Is it this eye the most, ma'am? Yeah, praise God. What's starting? sight is restoring to you in Jesus name I take away that spirit of blindness you will not go blind in Jesus precious holy name continue to worship God man continue he's beginning a work right now thank you Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit I give you confidence I give you confidence in his word I give you confidence in his name I give you confidence in what he said amen Jesus name Jesus name we got the cameraman thank you Lord bless you man in Jesus name what's going on here sinuses okay just breathe in like this out, in, in, out, touch. Okay, how's that clearing right there? There it is. Now you need to also get delivered of anxiety. Be touched in the name of Jesus. I called you to go away. You don't have a place in her life. Thank you, Jesus, right there. Ma'am, you, you have too much that God has on your plate to worry about the things you're worrying about. God has way too much for your future. It's a waste of your time. Give it to the Lord. <laughs> Isn't he good? Isn't he good? He loves you. Thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. Jesus' precious name. What's going on with her? Cerebral palsy and blind in Jesus' precious holy name. Be healed from your head to your toes. That's the power of God that's beginning to touch her right there. That's the power of God beginning to touch her right there. Cerebral palsy and blindness. Jesus' precious holy name. Stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. Out your arms. Jesus' name power of the Holy Spirit touch her in Jesus name from her head to her toes from her head to her toes in Jesus precious name there it is yes thank you Lord well that's a devil ma'am that's a devil let her go give her space give her space come out in the name of Jesus that's a spirit that's a spirit somebody have a bucket get a bucket real quick that's a spirit it's okay it's okay come on your tonsils in Jesus name be completely healed ma'am continue to get delivered continue to get delivered Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be healed, brother. I love you, buddy. What's your name, man? I pray for you in Jesus' name, right? Your tonsils are completely healed. Put your own hands on them. Say, I'm healed. Amen, in Jesus' name. Now begin breathing in and out. That's just the Spirit of God going through. You have asthma. I want you to get on the stage, please. Get on the stage real quick. Uh, over this way. Thank you so much. Who else? Who else? Put your hands up. You're coming for prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin moving. Whatever part of it is your body. If it's internal, just believe God. If it's internal, believe God. If it's internal, believe God. He's touching you right now, ma'am. Right there in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need, give him the burdens. I know that it's been unfair. I know there have been things you did not see coming. God says, I knew that you didn't see it coming. I was with you. I am not far. I am closer than you ever thought. I am closer than you've ever known. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Ma'am, God's going to start giving you dreams where you're going to get words in the night. Make sure you sleep with a pad and a pen next to your bed so that you can write what God is saying down, okay? Because there's answers that need to come to you. But when you're awake, you're too, there's too much that's going on. You can't hear it. So God's going to wait till you're sedate so you can't fight him. In your sleep, he'll just take over and he'll give you the words. Trust him for it. Amen, man. Thank you, Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Who else? Who else? Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's going on with you? Autism. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless you, buddy. Bless you, buddy. In Jesus' name, be completely healed. All the mental problems. All the mental issues. You're awesome, man. God loves you so much, brother. In Jesus' name. Yes, be healed. Be touched in Jesus' name. Be touched. What's going on with your back, sir? Sciatica? Oh, I love that. Jesus' name. Jesus, all the way up and down. Jesus' precious name. Be healed from your head to your toes. Now, begin to move, sir, up and down. Up and down. Begin. Loose. Loose. Be loosed. You can have my 
it's feeling better? It's percentage. I'm going to wait with you on this one. I'm going to wait with you on this one so it goes all the way. You're about 20% right now. Be completely healed. This is sciatic problem. How long you had it, sir? Three months? Yeah, yeah, it's done. It's done. Keep on moving. Better? Tell me when it's completely over. You're about 80% now. Now go back. Come on. Do it. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for it. Jesus' name. Don't wait for it. Yes. Yes. Where you at now, sir? You can have very good. Now I want you to do this. Give us some jump. Give us some jump. Side of pain. Now go with this one more time. Wow, sir. Three months of pain completely gone in Jesus' precious holy name. Give me a high five for that. Your jaw in Jesus' name. Open your mouth. Power of the Holy Spirit. Now close it. Open it. Pop, pop, pop in Jesus' name. Close it. Jesus' name one more time. Thank you, Lord. Okay, hands up real quick. We're going fast now. In Jesus' name. Stay with me, ushers, please. Stay with me. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, precious holy name. Thank Jesus, you, precious holy name. Come on, start to test it. Start to test yes. it. You need deliverance as well, ma'am. Need deliverance. Be completely set free from Thank all that anxiety Lord. and stress and pressure. Depression will not touch you. It touched your mom. It touched your dad. It touched throughout your entire family. I take it away from you now. In the name of Jesus, depression is completely gone. Go in Jesus' precious name. There you go. Be released. Be released. Just receive it. It's okay. It's the joy of the Lord. Yes. Just receive that. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. Bless you, sir. In Jesus' name. Breathe in and out. <sighs> Breathe in and out. Jesus' precious holy name. Be healed. Be healed. Breathe in and out. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Where's the knee at? Where's the knee you were talking about? Which one, ma'am? Right knee. Okay. Move your knee. Go. In Jesus' name. Go again. Feel good? Tell me when it's completely all better. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. 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 Thank you, Lord. Right now, so many Since people you were little. are getting healed. They're getting Jesus a touch name. from God Jesus right now. Name. Thank you. If you need prayer, I want you to stay here. Continue to believe that God is going to move and God is going to heal right now. God is Thank touching you, so many people. Thank you, Lord. My brother, where's the boy with asthma that's on the stage? Right up here. Yeah, no, no, no. Keep him on the stage. Yeah, okay, keep him on the stage. I'm going to be there in just a second. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank Move you, it again. Jesus. I'm just going through the presented with you. Thank you, ma'am. How you doing, sir? Jesus' name. That's the fire of God. Hey, you're supposed to be a, you preach the word. Though God has actually put inside of your mouth a hot coal, he's touching it right now. It's up to you whether you want to receive it or not, but this is what he destined for you. There are other things you can do as well, but your mouth was meant to speak from the fire of God and the word of God. He has brought you to himself. You are special to him, but you are his, nobody else's. You need to dedicate yourself back to the Lord right now, sir, because you have at times you've been feeling bad and ashamed because you have not been where you know you're supposed to be it's time to let that go let the guilt and the shame go right now i'm touching your mouth again because the calling is not gone even though you felt like you left let me say it again the calling's not gone even though you felt like you left jesus loves you man he's closer to you than you've ever known in jesus name everything you've been struggling with it ain't gonna be like that anymore he's gonna give you clarity he's gonna give you clarity do you receive that receive the joy of the lord take your hands up in jesus name by the power of the Holy. there it is Drink it in, drink it in, drink it in. Jesus' precious holy name, Jesus' name be healed, be healed, be healed. Anybody else over here, over here, if I'm missing you, make sure you come over to me. Make sure you come over to me. God bless. Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Make sure you're testing it out as well. Make sure you're testing it out as well. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. Thank you. Yes, yes, be healed. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Your foot? Which one? The right? Okay, so this is what you need to do. Get off your left foot. Begin to jump on your foot right now. This is faith. Go. How's that starting to feel? Feeling great, huh? How long you been having foot trouble? Two weeks. Is it all gone? It's all gone? Come on, give me a hand fire there, man. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, come back this way. Yep. What is it? Stroke. You lost the hand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In your precious name. I pray power back into you in life. In Jesus' name. The stroke, God. I thank you, Lord. Be peeled. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. There you go. In Jesus' precious holy name. Life. 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 Life in Jesus' name. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to stretch it, sir. 
Continue to go. Thank you, Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you're being completely made whole, sir. Man, you're a man of faith too, brother. I love you, man. Keep on going. Keep on going. Let God keep touching you. We keep going. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you, man. Oh, you're touching. Hey, look at you touching that. Now go ahead. Foot, foot surgery. Okay, go ahead and push that down. Go ahead and move on that. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus' name. What's up with you, man? Type 1 diabetic. Be healed in Jesus' precious holy name. Hey, as well, man, you got a lot of questions. But God has every answer you need. But he needs you to give 100%. There's no going back. No writing on the surface in the walls anymore. There's no half in, half out of this in any area of your life. God says, if you will give me all of you tonight, he said, I will show you many greater things than you have ever seen. Right now, the life Gavin, with me is way more exciting than the life by yourself. And Jesus' going name, around. bless He's you. laying hands right bless now. You. The power bless of God you. is bless moving you. Bless right you. now. Bless you. And we're going to keep the altars filled God right bless now. Anybody so else? People are going to give Anybody prayer. else up here? Here, make here. Sure to, make sure to let them know. But right now, if you have, if you have kids in Kids World right now, you're seated and you need to pick up your kids. Right now, our Kids World team is Please be behind her there. holding all the kids. So if you want to go to uh, make your way over there to Kids Jesus World to pick name, up your kids, over your whole body. now's a great time to do that. Um, but if you need prayer, stay here at the altars. God is moving right now. I know that God is doing some incredible things. How many received tonight a healing? How many received a healing tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next week, we have Lord Jesus. way back Wednesday, Bless we're doing Bless part three here. Pastor Mark is going to be mouth, bringing your a mouth. word right here, way back Thank Wednesday you, next Touching week. That you don't mouth. want to miss Love out with my friends and family. Pastor Mark is preaching a message season. this Sunday night. Thank you, Lord. Thank I'm you, sorry, Lord. This Sunday Let's go back this way real quick, anybody. You don't want to miss your knees in Jesus' name. Stay be touched. Do this. If you need prayer, stay up here. But if you need to pick up your kids from Kids World, now's a great time to do that. To go grab the kids. The Kids World team is right now working really hard, taking care of the kids. But if you need prayer, stay right up here. We want to pray with you. We want to make sure everyone gets prayer tonight. Right.